there are a couple of key components to a site visit that young engineers should know about in order to improve their overall uh, construction administrative experience, AKA the CA phase. What's up everybody? Today I'll be talking about how to conduct a site visit for all you professional civil structural engineers out there. So you've made it through the design phase and you successfully obtained your building permit. Congratulations, well done. Now the contractor comes in to do more of the heavy lifting and they are actually in the ground on site building your building. There becomes a certain point that the contractor completes enough of the structure that you as the engineer are going to want to check in and see parts uh, of the progression of the, of the build and make sure that everything is being built to the specifications that you have laid out in your design. Well, the first thing you wanna do is coordinate with your contractor. You can call them up and discuss or better yet, email them to determine a date that you wanna be on site. Let them know specifically what you're there to look for so that they can give you a really much better estimate of when that construction uh, phase will be done so that you can go out so that you don't waste each other's time. Because the last thing you wanna do is go on site and the contractor telling you, hey, that's not scheduled for another week or two. I didn't realize you were coming to look at that. Always specify, be very clear with what you want to see and they can accommodate it. I'll say usually mornings are better for contractors, at least in my opinion and in my experience. Construction crews start earlier in the day than your typical office nine to five because they're trying to beat the sun most often. Don't think you're you're just gonna scroll, uh, stroll out there after work at 5 p.m., that's almost always never gonna happen. Ask your contractor where to park your vehicle. Um, is it a separate lot out of the job site? Are you going into the job site and parking? You wanna make sure you're not getting in the way and you're not holding anybody up, especially those large uh, you know, cranes and vehicles that, are, that may or may not be moving around the site. All right, next let's get you prepped for your site visit. For all you savvy tech people out there, uh, you can bring an iPad to the site, that way that uh, contains all the PDFs that have your drawing sets on them that you can use for reference when you're checking and spot checking things uh, in the field. And obviously if you don't have an iPad, like I don't have an iPad, uh, print out a physical set to have on hand with you. That works obviously just fine. I recommend half size sets for anybody going to site. PPE, personal protective equipment, things like hard hat, high vis vests, gloves, closed toed shoes like steel toed boots, pants, long sleeve shirts, uh, protective eyewear, earplugs potentially, but it can vary from job site to job site and what you're doing. So always check with your contractor. And while it's never a good look to forget PPE and have to ask for it, if by chance you you know slip your mind and you left your latte on top of your car and that flew off and you left your hard hat at home, most of the time they have extra PPE within the trailer that you can borrow. Make it a priority to always remember your gear. That's a very big thing and it's not a good look showing up without any protective equipment. And last but not least, something to write with. Especially if you're expecting bad weather, make sure you have uh, a pen that can write in the rain or backup pens or pencils, whatever you prefer. Just make sure that you can uh, have a writing utensil to write down information. Otherwise, you're gonna be kind of screwed. All right, we've now arrived on site. Always, 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 first thing you wanna do is alert the contractor and let them know when you arrived on site. Job sites can be very big, so they can be all the way across the job site and it takes 20 minutes for them to get over to you. So let them know early, even if they're not standing right in front of you, ready to go. They will make their way over to you and you will take precedence when you get there. So there's two different styles that I'm used to while being on a job site. Uh, the first is you walk the job site with the contractor together from the very start. The second is that they say, hey, I need to take care of a few things. You go walk the job site by yourself, do what you need to do, observe, take notes. I'm gonna meet you later and then ask a few questions and see if you have any questions for me. So whichever way is chosen, it's time to get to work. Most often you're gonna be doing spot checks on the areas of construction that you're reviewing. And you're gonna be checking for general conformance to the design documents that you've created. You are not there to check every single bar, every single spacing of bar, hook lengths, every single dimension, every single nail, every single screw, every single piece of wood on site. You are trying to build your own confidence that uh, the contractor understands what they are building and, and know how to build it. You're getting a feel for how well the structure has been constructed to date. If you see major flaws, major issues, that's when you don't have any confidence in the builder and you need to discuss further and kind of uh, monitor more closely. But as you look, as you see kind of competent construction, really well-formed things, uh, everything as the design document stated, you are building that comfort with the contractor that, hey, they know what's going on, 
and you can be confident to let them do what they do best, build. This next bit of info is the most important takeaway from my video today, so take notes here. Do not stop work on a construction site ever. If you see something that is massively wrong, you alert the contractor immediately and let him make that call whether to stop work or not. Ultimately, if you see something incorrect, you may not have the full picture as to the sequencing or the methods being used to construct the structure. So if there's something that severely deviates from the structure, yes, you wanna flag it immediately, but you don't wanna be the one dictating what construction workers do. That is the contractor's responsibility. So get a hold of them and let them do their work. While the contractor is doing what they need to do, you should be taking plenty of photos of the area in conflict and be taking plenty of notes that you will then later put in your field report um, to capture the discrepancies. And I do wanna be clear here that I don't wanna uh, paint a picture of contractors versus engineers because that is not the case. I love contractors, especially good contractors. They are uh, your best friend and can make your life so, so much easier. Um, so always start off by befriending your contractor. Let's just get that clear. And uh, another thing to get clear is no one wants to construct a building incorrectly. No one. It's not as though if you see something incorrect that the contractor is trying to cut corners or slide by or anything like that. Most of the time it's just an oversight by someone um, that missed something in the design documents. While we try to be perfect with everything we do in this trade, the design side of things, we miss little things all the time. Contracting side, it is no different. When you see something incorrect, don't go crazy, but point it out, note it, document it, and the construction can move on from there. While this isn't a technical next step, let's talk about how you should be conducting yourself on site because I think it's something really crucial and really beneficial for young engineers to kind of grasp and understand how they should feel on site. Number one is be confident in the work that you've done as a designer. You're to the point now where your building is ready to be built. So feel good about that. Feel confident about that. There is no one way to design a structure. Don't expect that everyone is going to think the way that you designed it is the perfect way. Trust me. You will sometimes get remarks on site from construction crews saying that they've built structures like this for 30 years. Why is this one different? Why did you deviate from the norm? Uh, you know, that size over there of beam seems overkill to me. Um, this seems really strange. You know, do you know what you're doing? Don't mind those people at all. For every bad, you know, construction worker, there are a hundred more great construction workers. Think about it in any industry that we have on this planet. There are good people and there are bad people. There's great librarians and there's you know, unfortunately, shitty librarians in the world. It's the same for every trade. I am not knocking construction workers saying that they're bad. I'm saying that you have the good eggs and the bad eggs in every profession. You may have a crew out there that's used to putting up residential construction. So they're used to a lot, lot lighter requirements for buildings um, per the IRC, as opposed to the IBC and the ASCE 716, where you gotta ramp up in the straps and the hardware that you use and the size of members you use uh, in the design loading that you use. Take it with a grain of salt when someone says, hey, this looks too big. They may not grasp the idea um, of the type of building that they are actually building and why it differs from past buildings that they've built. My second big takeaway for this video is limit what you answer on site. People may try to get quick responses out of you and answer their questions so that they can progress with the work that they're doing. And as you gain experience over the years, you can answer more and more on site because you have that knowledge and that background to be able to give real time feedback uh, to construction crews. But if you have limited experience as an engineer, the best thing you can do is say, let me take down your question, go back to the office, review and get you an answer back ASAP. The best, best move possible. And honestly, uh, I'm not saying that I have all the experience in the world, but I continuously um, go to that as my go-to answer to things. I do not answer things uh, on the fly in the field because you're not, I can never be 100% positive that I fully grasp the thing that they're asking or the condition that it applies to. When you just start blindly answering questions or saying yes to things, people come out of the woodwork asking their own questions and all of a sudden you have a line of people uh, you know, that are asking 20 questions to you because you are the project engineer or you are responsible for the project engineer. So as soon as you say yes to something, it means green light, they can do whatever they want. So be very, very careful 
um, with jumping in and being eager to answer questions in person. All right, your site visit has concluded and you are now back at the office safe and sound with your cup of coffee or your glass of water. There's a couple things you need to do on your end now to wrap this up uh, and put it to bed for the next site visit. You'll generate a formal field report typed up transferring all the notes that you took in the field into you know, legible sentences that make sense and capture what you saw on site, um, as well as include things like photos, uh, people who you're on site with, including names. So while you're on site, the biggest thing for me was to ask someone's name and ask it like five times again, because you will forget, at least I'm very bad at remembering names. Always, always write their name down and don't feel embarrassed to ask again, even if they've already told you. It happens to everybody. But it's crucial for your uh, field report to write down names and people you talk to. Things like the weather, um, what you were reviewing, maybe give a snip of the design documents as to the location of the things that you looked at and uh, any types of problems that arose and the kind of the method to move forward, as well as things discussed on site with the contractor and tradesman. Another big thing is if dates were discussed for uh, kind of milestone construction things, if uh, there's concrete coming in to be poured, um, when the next pour is, you know, if, they're, if they said, hey, in the 30th, we're pouring the footings, and then, you know, the next week we're uh, anticipating to pour the slab. Those dates that were conveyed by the contractor, you'll want to get those in writing on your field report as well. You'll also want to follow up with them via email to confirm that those dates are accurate as you move forward uh, with CA. And lastly, something I didn't mention, take plenty of photos when you're on site. And I don't just mean plenty of photos like a lot of photos. I mean, take a lot of photos and then take a lot more photos. You will take a billion photos and then if there's a problem and you need to pull those photos up, it's always the area that you didn't take a photo of or that you can't see well enough that you wish you had more photos of. Even if it's on your phone, that's what I do most of the time. Once you get back, you just dump them off your phone, you put them in a project folder, and uh, you don't worry about it. So take so many that it makes you sick. I think a lot of young engineers think they're walking into the lion's den when they go to a site visit. Just think about it in the flip perspective. Imagine if a contractor came into your office and had to work there for the day. Um, you know, they're not gonna be attacked and pulled apart and it's gonna be a hostile environment. They're not gonna go over to the printer and try to use it and not understand how to use the damn printer because nobody understands how to use the damn printer, Janice. And you know people are gonna make fun of them or think, think worse of them or think little of them. That's not gonna happen at all. Someone's gonna come over, they're gonna assist them, let them know how it works, let them know how things operate and um, accommodate them. It's the same for you on any competent job site. So don't think that you're gonna be swarmed and you're gonna be belittled and you know everyone's just gonna give you no time of day. You are still, if you are inexperienced, they will, they will pick up on that, that for sure. Maybe a joke or two will be said, but it'll be all in good fun. So don't sweat that part too much. If you found this informative, leave a like down below. And if we get enough likes, the like button will finally get its own PPE construction hat. So you're gonna wanna help them out. If you haven't yet, and you're getting a lot of knowledge from my channel, subscribe and become even more involved. Or if you wanna take it even further, join the Peruka gang, look it up. Every donation helps me create better content for the next aspiring engineer out there. But my content will always be free. So you are not obligated by any means to join. But if you're in the means to do so, consider it next time. All right, gang, this is Rich with Team Kesteva, and I'll see everybody later. Peace.